What up, guys? Chris, of course, here to talk about post-fight HBO from uh, last night's or last night's HBO card. Started off with uh, Chad Dawson versus Adrian Diakonu. Uh Not a whole lot to say about this fight. Typical Chad Dawson fight. Chad Dawson wins fairly easily. Two things that bother me about this fight. Actually, just one thing for the most part. <laughs> HBO's commentary team. Come on, Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman. I know you're unbiased. I know you're all for Manny Stewart because he's your, you know, co-employee or whatever you want to call him. He's training Dawson now. But can we try to show just a little bit of objectivity? I mean, it's just ridiculous. They were they were all over Dawson's dick from the get-go saying, oh, this is going to be the more aggressive Dawson. Now he's going to punch through the punch, not just to the fighter and blah, 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 this and that. And he's going to get a spectacular knockout. And when it's all said and done, he got closer to getting knocked out in the last round than uh, he came knocking out Adrian Giacchini. So, um, you know, I don't know. I think that uh, the praisal of Manny Stewart's prowess is providing uh, or making power punchers is severely exaggerated based solely on Thomas Hearns, who is a once-in-a-lifetime uh, fighter um, with that kind of power at that kind of a build. I mean, you don't see Vladimir Klitschko knocking pulls dead since he's been with Emmanuel Stewart, let alone Lennox Lewis um, or or Jermaine Taylor. So don't go thinking just because Chad Dawson trained with Emmanuel Stewart now he's going to start taking hands off. Not going to happen. That said, a good win for Ch uh, Chad Dawson, you know, especially after being out for a year and after uh, suffering his first loss. So he's back in the mix of light heavyweight, and I uh, look forward to see what's next for him. Just don't look forward to hearing uh, Jim Lampley talk about it. On to the main event of the night, the fight that everyone was looking forward to. The rematch between Bernard Hopkins and Jean Pascal, man, uh, what a fight, you know, I had picked Pascal in the first fight, and I thought it was a draw, or I had him win, I don't remember exactly, but um, I didn't think that Hopkins got robbed in the first fight, like most people, and of course, I picked Pascal in the rematch, um, I just thought he had to do what I said he had to do in the first fight, was be more active, you know, I thought, okay, all he has to do is just throw more punches in this rematch than in the first fight, and he should win. Unfortunately, I think he threw less, but um, that's neither here nor there. You know, less, I can't take away, man. I'm not a Bernard Hopkins fan. never have really been, um, although I did like when he whipped Trinidad's ass. Uh, but, um, man, I, I can't take away from the greatness of this performance. Now, I already got a, a one comment I was reading where it said, you know, Hopkins is in a watered-down light heavyweight division. You know, and maybe you could make a case for that, but you cannot take away the magnitude of this victory. I mean, 46 years old, um, just not only that, but to take a rematch in hostile territory where you think you got jobbed in the, in the decision in the first fight. I mean, that alone takes some serious heart to do that, you know, because a lot of fighters wouldn't go back and fight in the home turf of the opponent if they had got robbed, you know, or got a bad uh, scorecard in the first fight. So that alone, you got to give credit for that, or at least I do. But, um, that aside, man, just a great performance. A good fight. You know, it, it, Pascal's performance for the most part was very similar to the first fight, minus the knockdowns against Hopkins. But Hopkins, I think he actually improved on his first performance. The first one, um, it was unexpected. You know, he was crafty. This one, he was even more crafty. But, I mean, he was more aggressive here, um, more open. Just, I don't know, man. I, it's hard for me to even describe how well of a game plan he executed in this fight. Hence the nickname, The Executioner, right? But um, he just had Pascal befuddled so many times. And he, of course, he made some great statements afterwards about how Pascal has great talent, if not the the technical skills to apply it the way he should, you know. Like, basically, I'm forgetting that Pascal needs a better trainer or more experience, which I think is the case. But, um, man, uh, you know, there were some good rounds in this fight. Both fighters got hurt. Um, Pascal, of course, got hurt early on first. Um, but Hopkins couldn't finish him, and then Pascal ended up cl clipping uh, Bernard later on in the fight, but couldn't really follow up. And of course, there were just some disputed knockdowns in this fight. Um, I thought Hopkins said it best in a post-fight interview. They weren't necessarily knockdowns, you know, more slippages because of that shitty uh, uh, mat that they had, that red mat. I don't. The only time I want to see a red mat on a boxing canvas is if it's from someone's blood, dude. That that was terrible. That uh, canvas that they were using in the fight was slipping all around all night. But um, yeah, even Hopkins says he didn't think those were legit knockdowns. He just kind of would make a case for him because, hey, if you can get that extra point from the referee or from the judges, you're definitely going to go for it. Um, but yeah, and then, of course, Bernard, I mean, he was piling up the rounds, but there was also some close rounds here and there, much like the first fight where it's like, uh, I could see a possibly close decision if it goes to it, you know, if it goes to the cards. 
And then, of course, um, Pascal needing to pull out that 12th round, possibly needed stoppage, almost got him, man. He hit Bernard with that huge right, which goes to show Pascal definitely carries his power late in a fight, regardless of his uh, punch or energy output throughout a fight. You know, it goes to show he has power late, but once again, he couldn't capitalize. You know, of course, credit to Bernard. Bernard just went to, you know, went swinging for uh, what was left, you know, kind of fighting for his life, so to speak. Um, saw the uh, saw the finish line and didn't want to throw it away or or collapse at the right before he reached it. But um, he survived. Pascal, of course, once again, could not um, capitalize on the moment, and it goes to a decision. You know, the first card when they announced it, I was like, oh, this could be a close. But once they said 116, 112 on the second card. I knew it was Bernard Hopkins' fight. I knew he got the decision because there's no way, no way, any unbiased, even that bad of a boxing judge as we've seen, there's no way you could have given uh, Pascal eight rounds and Hopkins only four. So once I said that, I knew it had to be a decision for Hopkins, which, you know, I've never been more uh, glad to be wrong in a fight as far as a decision going into a prediction. And I, once again, I'm not a Hopkins fan. I never really have liked Hopkins too much, um, both inside and outside of the ring, although I do respect the guy. But, um, yeah, I was so glad I was wrong because I thought he deserved the win. I thought he earned the win. You know, I was, I, you knew he earned the win when, regardless if there was fans that booed at the decision or not. When you heard people chanting Hopkins and B-Hop throughout the fight, um, at times when these people were all against him, when he walked into the ring, it was announced to, uh, to start the fight, you knew that you were seeing something special from Hopkins and that it wasn't just you seeing it on TV and the, you know, the announcements. It was also the fans and chants that, you know, could understand what was really taking place in that fight. Um, it was almost like something out of a movie, you know, like something that uh, could be a script. But um, for fortunate for Bernard Hopkins and fight fans, um, this was definitely legit. And, uh, you know, just a great performance by Bernard Hopkins. Pascal, disappointing performance on his end. Once again, you got to give Hopkins credit for it, more so than just Pascal. But Pascal really needs to learn how to fight more than just spurts and uh, bursts. You know, like Hopkins said, not just throwing power punches here and there, you know, set those punches up. Um, so... He should listen to Hopkins' advice. And like Hopkins said, not go the way of a uh, Kelly Pavlik gets discouraged by this loss, which doesn't look like Pascal will. He's a very confident fighter. Um, but yeah, my, my other, my one biggest problem with this fight, definitely the referee. That guy was a clown, man. I don't care if you say he's unbiased because he's from England. Um, they said this was the referee that allowed uh, uh, Shannon Briggs to get just hammered by Vitaly Klitschko last year. If you saw that fight, which was just terrible that he never stopped that fight. Um... But yeah, this referee was admonishing Hopkins all night, and he never, I never remember him once, not one single time, warning Pascal for punch on the back of the head, which he did numerous times throughout the fight during clinches. I mean, there was, these were clear fouls. These were clear violations of the rules. These, these, it wasn't an occasional one. He was, Pascal was definitely doing this illegally. Um, and Hopkins corner man, and Steve Richardson kept pointing this out. Hopkins was indicated. I never saw the ref admonish him. The ref would admonish Pascal for holding here and there. Of course, he admonished Hopkins time and time again for hitting on the inside, hitting while they were tied up, um, using his head, although Pascal was, you know, doing that with his head as well against Hopkins. Um, but the referee, I definitely felt, was more biased for Pascal just because he'd never admonished him. I mean, he should have took a point away at least once for, for hitting behind him. That was a joke. Fortunately for Hopkins, it didn't come back to cost him. Um, or it didn't play a big pack factor in the fight, but I just don't want to see this ref anytime again, anytime soon. Um, he was a joke. But uh, aside from that, you know, just good, great win for Bernard Hopkins. History in the making. It's good to be able to say I saw history. Um, and yeah, as for what's next for either fighter, I would love to see John Pascal against Tavoris Cloud. I think that'd be a sick fight. Hopkins, I don't really want to see him against Dawson. I think that's a point fight. I'd rather see him fight, like he said, he called out a boot. Someone like that. Um, Maybe even a rematch with Pascal. You never know. I mean, I'm, I think I'd favor Hopkins at this point. I think he's established that he's the better fighter. Um, but, you know, my, it makes dollars. It makes sense, as they say, in the, in, I guess in life, not just in the, in boxing. But, um, so, yeah, we'll see what's next. Uh, real quick, shouts out to YouTube user, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, C-I-P-E-O-3-9, C-P-E-O-3-9, let's just say that. He was talking trash, saying, uh, you know, Hopkins is going to win this fight. Um, so credit where it's due, man. You called it. I was wrong. And also, where's Justin's strike cards, man? Bernard Hopkins is very fighter. This guy needs to make a video. Um, I don't know if Justin's making videos anymore or not strike cards, but I really want to hear your thoughts on this fight, man, because I know you had to be loving it. Also, I mean, I'm sure you guys heard, if you didn't see, Roy Jones got just knocked out again yesterday. 
um, by Dennis, what is his name? Dennis, uh, let me see, I wrote that down somewhere. L Lebedev, I didn't see the fight live, so Lebedev. Um, but yeah, man, it was a sad, sad case, you know, and uh, I saw a friend um, on Twitter right, you know, the comparing Hopkins and Jones, it's like the tortoise versus the hare, you know. One guy's career started out fast, and look where he is now, Roy Jones, and then Bernard Hopkins started out slow, and he's like the turtle ultimately win ends up winning the race. So my question is this, though. Two things. Actually, one thing. Who do you think's career is better at this point now? I think for the longest time, it was obvious that Roy Jones had the better career, um, would be looked at better in the history books as a better fighter. You know, he went up to heavyweight. He had that run of light heavyweight. He beat Bernard Hopkins in the first fight. Um, he was the first guy to be the middleweight and heavyweight champion, both, um, aside from one other fighter. I forgot who it was. Um, and now, you know, he's going. He's just losing. He's looking terrible. You could say this doesn't hurt his legacy, but then look at what Bernard Hopkins has done now. You know, he had that 10-year run, ten year run of middleweight. Um, he's moved up head to light heavyweight and had success. Now he's been the oldest uh, fighter in the history of the sport to win a, a legit title. So, you know, when you look at their careers, of course you got the rematch win over Roy Jones for what it's worth. Um, when you look at their careers now, reflecting back, not who was the better fighter at their peak. I think Roy Jones was the better fighter at his prime. I mean, he was the fighter of the 90s. The guy was an absolute just beast. But now, when their careers are all said and done, and the, uh, you know, the history of the record books, whatever you want to say shows, who do you guys think had the better career? Roy Jones or Bernard the Executioner Hopkins? Would love to hear your thoughts, man. Um, honestly, I'm still not sure. I'll probably be talking about this, though, and a lot more. Of course, this fight and everything else on the Science Minds Radio Show coming up soon. If you can't catch it live, if you can catch it live, man, feel free to call in and give your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. The number is 347-637-3025. Uh, and, of course, I'll put a link to the show and the information part of the video as well as a link to my Twitter and scienceofvice.com. But um, can't catch it live. You can always catch it on podcast and on demand. Want to hear your thoughts on the fights, man? Uh, Dawson, Diakonu, what's next for Dawson? Uh, of course, I want to hear your thoughts on uh, Hopkins' performance against Pascal. What do you think Pascal should do next? And what do you think Hopkins should do next? Um, and, you know, if you have any thoughts on Roy Jones, go ahead and leave those. And, of course, who do you guys, like I said, who do you think had the better career or who do you think in history will look at as the better fighter or have had the better career, Bernard Hopkins or Roy Jones Jr.? That's it for now, guys. I'm Science Radio Show coming up in a little while. Until then, or until next time, I'm out.